Welcome to iLecture Online. Now we finally came to the method of variation of parameters. What is that? Now in the previous set of videos, in this series here, we've seen how we use the method of undetermined coefficients to find both the homogeneous and the particular solution to a second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So we're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to use a different method called the method of variation of parameters. It is a method that takes longer, it's not as easy as the one that we use the undetermined coefficients with, but what we can do with that method is we can solve one that has non, what we call constant coefficients. We can actually have a function of t here and a function of t there, and of course a function of t on the right side, and we can still solve for both the homogeneous and the particular solution. Now, of course, to solve for the homogeneous part of the solution, we will need to use different methods. The method that comes to play here when we use the method of variation of parameters is to solve for the particular solution. Now, later on, we will show you how to find the homogeneous solution for an equation like that that has non-constant coefficients. So far, we've only done that where the y term was missing. So we'll show you how to do it for different types of differential equations. But what we want to do here is explain what the method of variation of parameters is and what the solution of it looks like. And then later on, we'll show you some videos where we actually derive these equations because it's always good to know where they came from. So essentially, what we're going to do here is realize that the solution, well, where am I here? The total solution, of course, I didn't write the total solution. Oh, well. Where is the total solution? Let me write it over here. So y is a function of t is going to be equal to the sum of the homogeneous part plus the particular part. So this will be the general solution of the differential equation. To find the homogeneous part, you're going to set this equal to 0 and solve for this part of the differential equation when it's set equal to 0. And of course, when we have non-constant coefficients, we still need to learn how to do that. When it comes in coefficients, we then use what we call the characteristic equation, solve for the roots, and come up with the standard solution. And that gives us something in the form of this, a constant times a function plus a constant times a function, where y1 and y2 are definitely solutions to the homogeneous part of the solution. Now, how do we find the particular solution in this case using the method of variation of parameter? Well, the assumption is that the solution will have this form. It'll be y1 and y2 again, which are solutions to the homogeneous part of the equation. And then we're going to multiply these by two other functions, u1 and u2. And so the whole effort here is to find the value what u1 and u2 are equal to. I guess I shouldn't say value. It's going to be a function, of course, in t. But the whole method here is method of variation of parameters is to find u1 and u2. How do we do that? Well, we're going to find that u1 prime times y1 plus u2 prime times y2 is going to be equal to zero. And we'll show you later why that is so. And we also will find out that u1 prime times y1 prime plus u2 prime times y2 prime is equal to g of t, which is the function on the right side of that differential equation. What that means now is that we now here have a set of linear equations of the variables u1 prime and u2 prime. So we're going to take these two equations and we're going to solve them for u1 prime and u2 prime. And then using those two answers we're going to, or results, we're going to find u1 and u2. Because once we have u1 and u2, we multiply that times y1 and y2, and we then have the particular solution. It turns out that u1 can be found to be the negative of the integral of y2, that's this y2 right here, times g of t, which is the function over here, divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2. Of course, we integrate that, we need a dt. But if you don't remember what the Ronskian is, here's the definition. It is equal to the determinant of, on the first row, y1 and y2, and the second row, the derivatives of y1 and y2, which means the Ronskian of y1 and y2 is y1 times y2 prime minus y2 times y1 prime. So that goes on the denominator right here. Notice that u2 looks very similar, but in this case it's y1 in the numerator instead of y2 times g of t dt 
divided by the Ronskin. So the denominator is the same. Matter of fact, this whole part here is the same on both sides, except when we find u1, we have y2 in here. When we find u2, we have y1 up here. Of course, this is negative and this is positive. Once we've determined what these are, and of course, what you need to do first is find y1 and y2 by solving the homogeneous part. So you can find these two right here. You can find the Ronskin. And of course, this you simply grab from the equation right there. You then have to integrate both of them. And then finally, you can say the particular solution is u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. So we take this here and multiply times y1. We take this here, multiply times y2. And together now, we have the solution, or at least the particular solution of the differential equation. We add that to the homogeneous part, and then we have the general solution to the equation. So that's what we mean by the method of variation parameters. Even if you don't know how to derive these equations, although we'll show you in the next several videos, you can simply take these formulas, plug in the proper numbers, plug in the proper functions, and find the particular solution. We'll show you some examples of how to actually do that on some real problems later. But that's what we mean by the method of variation of parameters.